welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time we're going to delve into the world of FreeBSD. This is a server, desktop and embedded operating system that provides an alternative to Windows or Linux. Specifically in this video we're going to focus on the options for running FreeBSD as a desktop operating system. So, let's go and take a closer look. So, here we are on the FreeBSD project website where we are met by this little red beastie. FreeBSD is derived from BSD or the Berkeley Software Distribution which was a version of a Unix operating system developed at the University of California, Berkeley. As the name suggests, FreeBSD is free, with the first version released in 1993. The latest version of FreeBSD is release 14.2, which became available in December 2024. FreeBSD has a focus on performance, networking and storage. It can be found running on some core internet routers and root name servers, and is also used by some major providers of online content. So, for example, if you watch Netflix, you are streaming video from a server running FreeBSD. However, here, as I noted earlier, we're going to focus on FreeBSD for desktop use. In this context, it should be noted that if we go to the download page, whilst we find FreeBSD available for lots of different kinds of hardware, all of the supplied images are command line only and so do not include a graphical desktop. When booted after this initial menu, FreeBSD therefore runs up to look like this. But, as detailed in the extensive documentation, it's possible to install a desktop environment with a choice comprising KDE Plasma, GNOME, XFCE, Mate, Cinnamon and LXQT. This does, however, first involve installing and configuring an XORG or Wayland display server, and so getting a desktop system up and running is not trivial, especially for a novice user. But fear not, as we can see on the FreeBSD Foundation website, a number of FreeBSD desktop distributions are available. For those new to FreeBSD, these provide a very straightforward installation image with a desktop pre-installed. So, let's test these out. Right, here we are on the website for GhostBSD, which, as we can see, describes itself as a simple, elegant desktop BSD operating system, and more specifically, if we scroll down here, we can see it's based on free BSD. The official version of GhostBSD comes with a Mate desktop pre-installed, and indeed, if I just minimise the browser, we can see we are running GhostBSD with a Mate desktop right now, as indeed we were when we looked at websites in the last part of the video. Returning to the GhostBSD website, if we go to download, we find a link straight away to the official image with the Mate desktop, although it's worth noting there's also an unofficial image with an XFCE desktop. As we can see, system requirements are for 4GB of RAM and 15GB of drive space, and once the file has been downloaded, it just needs to be written to a USB drive using an imaging program such as Belena Etcher or Rufus. And if you then boot from the USB drive, you'll soon arrive on the GhostBSD desktop, where there's an icon to perform an install if you wish. This is then very straightforward, indeed more so than some Linux installers, and after selecting your keyboard layout and the time zone, if you opt for full disk configuration, you just need to select the drive to install GhostBSD on, stick with the default boot option, and enter a username and password for the user admin account. GhostBSD will then install itself, which will wipe everything from the drive you selected. Back here on the desktop, everything is very straightforward and easy to use. We have a Mate desktop after all, and in the day or so I've been testing this out, I've had no stability or performance issues. If we go to the menu, there's some basic software 
pre-installed. Under accessories, we've got uh, well, a few accessories, as we can see. Under graphics, we've got Shotwell for organizing our photos. We've got an image viewer. We have got under internet, a Firefox web browser we were just running. Under office, we have nothing to write home about at all. Under sound and video, we have the Rhythmbox music player and also the VLC media player for videos. And under system tools, we've got, well, some system tools. And so if you want to use this system purely for consuming media files and browsing the internet, everything you need is pre-installed. But I think most people will want to install some additional software. So how do we do that and what's available? Well, over 30,000 applications have been ported to FreeBSD, many of which can be installed as pre-compiled packages. And here in GhostBSD, we can install such packages via a graphical package manager called Software Station. And we find this in System, Administration, and there it is, Software Station. What a great name for a program. And I now need to enter my password to get to it. There we go. And it now needs to sync with its repository. So we'll just fast forward through as it does that. There we go. And we now have a set of categories down the left of the screen. Slightly strange set of categories, and for some reason here they end at the letter E, which is a little bit suspicious. And they bear no relationship to the categories we see here on the menu, accessories, graphics, internet office, etc., which is slightly strange. And uh, I've therefore found it much easier just to search for things here. So, for example, if we want to install the GIMP photo editor, we'll just do a search for GIMP like that. And lots of things come up because it includes various additional files, but the program itself is there. So let's just click on that for the GNU image manipulation program, and we will click on apply to install the software. And indeed, a few other things are being installed as well, it seems, but I will confirm the whole lot, and then we'll speed on through. There we go, it has completed. And in theory now in our menu under graphics, we have, yes, the GNU image manipulation program. Let's run it up here in Ghost. BSD. And hopefully it'll get there. I suppose it's its first run up. It's got something probably exciting to do in the background. But oh, look, there we are. We can see the familiar toadstools for the GNU image manipulation program. And its Babel fishes are now being applied. Always uh, good to see. And uh, here we are. GIMP is clearly running here in a free BSD. Next, let's search for a Libra Office like that. And uh, this will come up with lots and lots of things, as I recall. Yeah, there's all sorts of language packs and things. LibreOffice itself is here somewhere. We just keep uh, going down. There it is. Look, that's the uh, LibreOffice full integrated office productivity suite, as it says here. And we could install this, therefore, by just uh, clicking there and doing an apply. However, I thought it's important to show you the other way of installing, which is using the terminal. So let's minimize this for a second and we'll run up the terminal from uh, System Tools and uh, Fish is the terminal here. Very exciting. Here we are in the terminal. And to install an application, we need to have rights as the super or root user. And here in FreeBSD, we don't, unlike in Linux, have sudo pre-installed, so we can do that as the existing user. And so what we need to do is to type su to become a super user like that. And we now need to enter the root password. And if you're wondering, what is the root password? Back in the installer, when we set the password for the admin user, the same password is initially set to be the root password. So that's what your root password will be. So I'll now enter mine. It won't appear on the screen. There we go. We're now root on this system. And it's always a good idea to ensure that our repositories are updated before installing software. They will be here because we've just been running the graphical software station. But if we hadn't been, we would type a package like that and an update like that. We should find here everything is up to date, as we would expect. And we're now going to install the package. So let's install LibreOffice using the terminal by typing package and install. And guess what? LibreOffice like that. And uh, there we are. It's uh, happy to do it. Do we want to proceed? Yes, we do. And there we are. LibreOffice has now been installed, along it seems with some uh, additional fonts. So uh, let's just exit as super user like that and also exit the terminal like that. And hopefully we go back to the menu and office. There we are, LibreOffice is here. Let's just launch the whole lot for once. There it is coming up 
very happily. And if I want to write, for example, a document, we can obviously launch a LibreOffice Writer. And here we are in our familiar program, where I have to type hello like that and make it very large indeed, because it is the law. There we go. Now, what I'm now going to do is to go back to the software station. I've shown you both a graphical install and a terminal install. And I think I'm now going to install a range of applications just to prove they're available in FreeBSD. So I'm now very quickly going to install Inkscape as well as Critter and then Caden Live. And then finally, and most importantly, no desktop computing setup can be complete without Solitaire. And uh, there we go, those have all been installed. We've got lots of things in our menu, which include Solitaire and games here, but we'll start out by running up Inkscape. There we are, we can clearly use Inkscape on this system. And let's now also run up the Critter painting package. Yes, we can clearly use Critter here on this FreeBSD, this Ghost BSD system. And so let's penultimately also run up Caden Live, the video editor. This clearly works too, which is good to see. And then finally, we can run up Solitaire. Here we go, very exciting. And so I'll now engage in a bit of very important, extensive testing, and I'll come back to you when it's complete. Next, I thought we'd take a look at Midnight BSD, which is the first FreeBSD desktop distribution listed on the FreeBSD Foundation website, where it's described as being suitable for novice to advanced users. And indeed, the project website describes Midnight BSD as a BSD-derived operating system developed with desktop users in mind, with the developers striving to create an easy-to-use operating system everyone can use. However, unlike with Ghost BSD, the Midnight BSD installer is not ideally suited for those unfamiliar with FreeBSD. And even when it's completed, the system remains in a terminal mode and asks a number of configuration questions. One of which is whether we want to enable a graphical environment. And when we answer yes, Midnight BSD proceeds to download and install an XFCE desktop, one file at a time. So clearly a desktop is not pre-installed in the initial image. And unfortunately for me, upon reboot, and after four installation attempts and a lot of messing around, I cannot get a desktop to appear and we remain in terminal mode. Now, this may be an issue with me. I might be doing something really stupid. It may be an issue with my test hardware, which is an Intel J4105 system on which I do test a lot of different operating systems and on which we've just run GhostBSD with no issues. And I do imagine that if I spent some more time on it, I may be able to get things to work. However, in 2025, the basic installation of a desktop operating system should not take any level of messing around in a terminal. And so I'm going to move on to another FreeBSD desktop distro. Greetings! We're now going to look at a desktop operating system called Hello System, which is based on FreeBSD and has a target audience of those switching from a Mac. However, anybody with x86 hardware can try to run Hello System, although do note that it's currently in version 0.8.1 and so is still experimental. And on non-Mac hardware, the use of a Raspberry Pi keyboard and hub are recommended to enable automatic detection. These points noted, once the Hello System ISO file has been downloaded and imaged to a USB drive, it boots straight to a desktop. And here an installer is available, which I've tried out and is incredibly easy to use with no explanation required. Although sadly, on the two systems I've installed Hello System on, after installation, it didn't work, with the system either looking like this, or at best like this, with a desktop without a panel, menu, or internet connection. 
So let's come back to the live image running from the USB drive just to show you that this really is a very Mac looking type of system and it's got a very interesting approach to applications. We can see here, for example, lots of applications listed in the menu, FreeCAD, we've got uh, Audacity there, we've got uh, GIMP, Blender, Inkscape, Critter, Scribus, we have got various browsers, LibreOffice, etc. Although if we go to run one of these applications, we discover it isn't actually installed yet. We have markers in the menu, which when you first click on them, download and install the application. Although as it warns here, this may well not work in the live image. So we'll click OK there. And indeed, if I did click here to download LibreOffice, I know from previous tests that the whole system would just crash. And so there we are. Hello system, not ready for prime time yet. Maybe it works better on Mac hardware. That may well be the case. Although it's certainly a FreeBSD desktop distro whose progress I will follow with interest. Right. Let's now turn to Nomad BSD, which is a persistent live system that runs from a USB drive. So it really is a nomadic form of desktop FreeBSD, as you can take it from one computer to another. Once imaged to a USB drive, Nomad BSD boots into a first run setup tool, which is very straightforward and just requires entry of some basic details and a user account. And once this has been completed, it subsequently reboots to its desktop, as we can see here. Any changes made, including application installs and settings, are retained, so making Nomad BSD a handy portable desktop system which may come in useful for data recovery and testing FreeBSD hardware compatibility. Down the bottom we have a plank populated with some of the pre-installed applications, including the Firefox web browser, Thunderbird, the Genie programmer's editor, the NC Media Player. We have the GNU image manipulation program, GIMP, pre-installed. Let's speed on through as it boots from a USB drive. There we go. Good to see GIMP running here again in free BSD. And also down the bottom here, we have a very useful handbook for Nomad BSD. It's got great documentation. And also here, a package manager. Let's just run that up. Now I need to put in my password. And we'll just let it populate. There we go. And so it's very easy to add new applications. We can just click that, add a new application, type a name, for example, Inkscape, like that. And uh, as we've seen previously, it would come up, we could uh, do a very simple software install. Talking of software, there's quite a bit here in the main menu. Lots and lots of settings, as you can see. Quite a few accessories, quite a few programmers development tools. Under graphics, we've got GIMP, as we've just seen. Various things under internet, not just the browser, but also uh, files, other things like that. The usual kind of multimedia player stuff. PDF viewer, no office package. We could, of course, install one and various system tools. And so there we are, Nomad BSD, a FreeBSD desktop operating system that runs from a live, persistent USB drive. As we've seen in this video, GhostBSD and NomadBSD offer a very decent FreeBSD desktop computing experience. And this may also be the case with MidnightBSD and Hello System running on the right hardware and with an appropriate level of technical expertise applied. If you want to learn more about FreeBSD, I strongly recommend the RoboNuggy YouTube channel, which is dedicated to free BSD and contains loads of tutorials and reviews. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.